I'm Stacy Johnson and I'm working on a new Thank You for Recycling sign for our local recycling center. I have noticed that our Thank You for Recycling sign was showing a lot of wear and tear and I was thinking that with current budgets and issues that might be the reason that they had let it get to a state of such disrepair. Maybe they didn't have the same personnel to create it or fix it. And then one day when we went to recycle, the whole thing had fallen down and it was just laying there in a plop on the side of the road. So I decided to contact the main person in charge of recycling for our township and offered to create a new one for them and donate it. The first time I thought about recycling was actually I used to babysit for this really awesome family across the street when I was growing up and um, the mom was an environmental scientist and they recycled all sorts of stuff and I'd never seen anybody else do that. This is when I was in you know fifth or sixth grade so I was pretty young um, and I'd never seen anybody else do that. I'd, kind of maybe heard of it a little bit, but never ever actually seen it in action. And um, so I talked to them and I'm like, well, you know, what, what do you, why do you guys do this? What's this all about? And obviously back then, I mean, what they did was very different than the type of recycling that people do now. Um, and so it was really interesting watching their family do it and watching their children. And so it was something that um, as somebody who loves nature, and uh, it was just very interesting that sort of thing had, you know, a really strong resonance with me. And so um, pretty much that put it on my radar. And then after that, um, the more I heard and found out about it, the more interested I became. And, and as soon as I was at a point where it was something that we could do, um, you know, our family started doing it as soon as possible too. I had thought about doing something much more simple in terms of design, um, but you know I really enjoy painting and I really felt like it was a way to put a little more time and effort into it and really kind of try and express to the other members of the community um, how their community mindedness is appreciated by lots of others of us that do the same thing. And so I decided to do something a little more complicated. And so I started just looking around at other signs and ones that I saw that I liked and ones that were interesting. The other part of it, as you can see, there are some, some natural design elements of the sign and that's kind of hoping to bring in people's thinking of why it is that we are recycling when you know you go there and sometimes it seems like a pain or if you're trying to recycle stuff in the middle of winter and it's cold and it's just nice to make that effort and remember why it is that we're Recycling is important and why we all do it. When you first began recycling, was there, was it just a few things? Were you like, I'm gonna, I'm going to take everything that I can or, I mean, how did you know even what you could recycle? Um, I think when we started, it was, you know, there, it was just like the recycling drop-off center and it was, it's pretty clear when you go there and say, oh, this is the stuff that I can recycle. And that always leads to the, but I want to recycle more. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that we, we don't need to be creating this much waste and 
isn't there a way that we can either you know first of all reuse these items second of all you know recycle them um, because as, as awesome as recycling is it's really not the best thing that we can do I mean I'm really much more interested in reducing our waste and reusing items um, before you know we take the final step of having to recycle stuff so what are some of the ways that you reuse items um, well, I find that there's almost a limitless, you know, use for plastic containers. Um, you know, you can use it instead of Tupperware. You can use it for all sorts of um, organization um, with just a little bit of, you know, cleaning and care on your part. Um, so much of, of what we consume has these amazing extended shelf life, you know. And so the containers that they come in can look good for, you know, 10, 20 years, you know? Um, and so it's really a, if you can find something that's suitable for, um, you know, a few different purposes, you can reuse lots and lots of containers without much effort on your part at all. And the really nice thing about that is that, you know, the first thing is it's a huge benefit to you because the more stuff you reuse, the less stuff you have to buy. And so it's really one of those things where, you know, a lot of people are, you know, all about the environment and this and that. And it's one of those really amazing, um, you know, circular processes where it becomes, you know, taking care of myself is also the exact same thing and is in complete an alignment with taking care of the earth. And that these two things are not actually, you know, different at all. They're exactly the same. There isn't any kind of division between them. And, you know, it's not something like, oh, I have to do work or I have to do this or that or the other. It's, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, well, brushing your teeth is work, you know, but you still brush your teeth, you know. It's the same thing taking care of the earth. It might require a little extra elbow grease. Um, but in the end, it benefits you personally, as well as the entire earth and the community that you live in and the community across the world. Is there any place that you, that you can shop that lets you reuse stuff? Well, one of my favorite places to reuse my items is the East Lansing Food Co-op because you can bring your own containers for all sorts of awesome products and fill it up and so it is just so tremendous on so many levels because you're not paying for more containers that you don't need. You're not paying for the containers to be shipped. Um, you're not creating excess waste that you don't need to. Um, it just works on so many different levels. Um, and, you know, for example, laundry detergent bottles. I mean, those things are so durable. I, I can't imagine ever needing to purchase a new one. And yet, every week at the store, normal consumerism has us going out and buying a brand new laundry detergent bottle. Well, the one I have from last week is perfectly good. Why can't I just reuse this one? And that is a benefit to all of us on so many different levels. Um, so that's one of the places that I reuse a ton of my containers and I absolutely love it. I have mixed all of the colors all myself from the basic primary ones. And this is a really good example, I think, and part of the, um, you know, idea behind this project is also to you know, hopefully inspire some other community members to say, wow, you know what, somebody else in my community took the time to make this sign on their own, you know, they, they did all of the, all of the work, you know what, maybe I could do that, maybe there's a way that I can help out in my community, it doesn't even necessarily have to have to do anything with recycling, it can just be you know, maybe it, I'm, you know, I've never done any kind of sign painting. I'm not a professional artist. I'm, you know, but I have extra resources that I can put towards community projects and I can make time 
for things that I feel are important and you know hopefully somebody else will see this and say you know what I could do the same thing maybe it's helping out at the library or helping out mentoring students in the community or anything else that needs to be done that doesn't necessarily require special skills or money just requires time and that's one of my greatest hopes for this project I think it's important to think, well, okay, so if I'm asking why is it important to care for the earth, I think the first thing you can say is, well, why is it important to care for myself? Because in reality, these things always go together. Um, taking care of yourself, when you do that and you do a good job of that, you also take care of the earth. And the same thing is true when you take care of the earth. When you're doing a good job taking care of the earth, you will also benefit primarily from that endeavor. And that's why I think it's um, such a growing, there's so many different aspects of this that are growing and there, it works on so many different levels and so many different cycles, um, like with farmer's markets and how popular those are becoming because it's, it works on so many levels for the same reasons. And it's the same thing when, you're, when you say, why should I take care of the community? It's the same question. It's like, well, because taking care of the community is always taking care of yourself as well. Um, we live in a community, which is the earth. Um, and any part of that that you are trying to give added care to or added help is going to benefit all parts. Um, and so it's never something that you can isolate. You can't say, you know, your community versus you versus the earth. It's all together. We're all together. And we're all part of the same community, whether it's our local township or a township across the country or a township across the ocean. It's the same issues, it's the same earth, it's the same base foundation that we all share and I think that when we take care of ourselves and we take care of each other and we take care of our community and our environment that those are, are very important aspects of existence. We have limited resources and we have limited space and we have limited options and there are lots of better ways that we can deal with these options, but right now recycling is one of the only basic ways that we have of reusing a lot of the containers and refuse that our culture sadly generates so much of. Um, I think it's also, you know, part of the the reasoning behind creating the sign. You know, I kind of, it was an interesting thing because I had seen this sign at our recycling center just kind of, you know, it got to a certain point and then it just started, you know, degrading super fast and then boom, the next time I was there it was on the ground all just abandoned and disheveled. And, you know, it was just an easy way for me, I saw there was a need in the community. Oh, look, the sign's down, it's broken. They need a new sign. I have a certain set of skills. I'm probably capable of painting a sign that says thank you. Um, and wouldn't it be a nice message if it also on there says, 
you know, hey, this is something that was created and donated by a member of the community that is caring for the community and is really happy that there are people recycling and that there's a lot of us that are interested in doing that in our community. And um, so that was really the whole, um, be and also, you know, knowing that all of, all of everyone these days is in, you know, fiscal, fiscal constraints and thinking that it might be harder for them to replace or make a sign um, possibly than it used to. And I could easily, you know, donate some of my own time, energy and, and supplies without much um, hardship on myself. And it would be an interesting experiment. And uh, I think it worked out really well. I think that that this concept of not getting anything back is really a, a myth about volunteering, and I would think it's fair to say that people that volunteer understand what they get back, and it's not money, although in some cases eventually it actually could be. But the, you know, when you provide and help others in your community, you always get back, always. I think kids are, are natural, natural environmentalists. And when you look at schools going towards green policies, um, there is a ton of interest by the students. I think the other thing, and I, I think this is, if you can emphasize this, you, you can't emphasize it enough, is that when you look at what is going on and you look at the numbers, it can be very daunting and it can make you feel like, well, whatever I do doesn't make a difference. I think that the important thing to stress is that every little bit makes a huge difference and that you know tiny tiny changes on a very small scale when used over mass numbers can be huge huge changes and i think it's also important for kids and i think one of the reasons that they are natural recyclers is because you know, kids have an interesting time growing up, as, as you mentioned, um, and when they feel like they, they can be the ones that are helping, they can be the ones that are protecting the earth, they can be the ones that are making the change that's very empowering for kids because so often, because they are growing up, they don't have any, you know, they're the ones being cared for, they're the ones being managed, and when you can flip it around and say, hey, you get to be the one in charge, you get to be the one who's helping, you get to be the one who's doing the saving and the helping, it's, it's awesome for kids, it's very empowering for them. Recycling is always has to be local because we have to, the places for us to recycle have to be here. We can't recycle across the state. You know, I can't go to Traverse City to recycle my plastics. That's not gonna work. So recycling is always, always a local activity. Um, one huge thing is I know um, this is really Funny at work, we were talking about when MSU started accepting a whole broad range of plastics that um, weren't taken in a lot of the other local recycling centers. And um, we were talking about it at work, and you know, we work and we have cubes, and so you know, you can kind of hear everything. We, 
without actually trying. And when we were talking about that, there were like four people all like swarmed over and started talking. And they're like, they take number five, no way, that is so awesome. Where is this place? I'm gonna stop by there this weekend. And it was just really exciting to see with just, that was just a couple people talking about it. Um, just how interested people are and how much of a need there is for us to accept more products locally that we can recycle and that there's a huge interest in doing it. It's also, you know, depending on the logistics, it can be a big expense for localities. Um, and so that's a, a big concern um, when you're talking about the local aspect is how do you balance these desires and needs of the community locally with what is fiscally and logistically possible. Um, and so those are always majorly local issues that need to be discussed at a very, very specific level. About recycling, there's been, like you were saying, a huge response from the, the community. You bring up the fact that you can take a new number four or whatever to a, a new location. Like, what? Where? This is great. What, what is it about recycling that has been so successful that we, so many people have, have gotten on board with that, but yet there are so many other programs that would also be helpful for the environment and you know, regionally where we live and things of this nature, but people don't necessarily you know, opt into it. Or what, what is it about recycling that, how do people do that? Um, well, I think with recycling, the thing that's really easy about recycling is that it's basically something that people already do. You take something that you're done with and you put it in a container somewhere. There isn't really any uh, different perspective or approach that is required in order for you to either put that in a recycling bin or a trash container. It's, it's pretty much the exact same activity. Um, some of the other programs, although they don't really require a lot of extra work, on occasion they do require a little extra work or maybe just a slightly different mindset as you're considering um, what it is that you're doing. And so that, I think for all of the other programs, that makes them a little bit more challenging to get the word out. But I think that it's uh, something that people are, are definitely interested in doing. Um, and I think the more, the more that we get the word out, the more people will be interested in, and adapt to it. Just like recycling, even with as close it is, it is to throwing stuff away, you know, at one point was a pretty radical idea. So hopefully some of these other programs will catch up. I think one of the, the great things about recycling is we can all see how willing everybody is to um, you know, make the effort at some level and that I think if we make reasonable choices as communities, we can find ways that are much more economically advantageous and much more environmentally advantageous. Um, I think clearly there's a lot of interest. I think most communities have shown how much they're interested in this sort of pursuit and recycling itself is a losing, just on so many levels, is a losing um, way of dealing with our waste. And really, I think we need to kind of redefine the waste of our society and how we generate it, why we generate so much, and really kind of go from there um, and kind of do a do-over <laughs> and see, now that we have a lot more options, what we should we should be doing instead of just trying to deal with this on the back end with a little bit of recycling and sorting and saying, well, I'm not going to put this little piece in the landfill. We need to address it on a much grander scale. Right on. But I think that the awesome thing and the really great thing is, as I think that people have really shown that there's a will and a desire for that to happen and we just need to make it happen.